In the previous lesson, we learned how to send data to the server with a POST request. Let's briefly remember how the functions currently work. We send data to the server with the POST method. The sent data is saved in a list with the append function. Saved data can be called with the get method. Note that the paths are different. If a get request with an empty path is sent to the server, it will show us all the values in the list. If a certain number variable is sent as a get request, the desired element of the list will be shown to us. Let's take a look at how it works. I will send a get request using Postman. The server is currently not active. Let's activate the server. You can activate the server using this code. The GET request returned an empty list. Let's send some data to the server using a POST request. I send a GET request to see all members in the list. Let's send another data to the server. We can see all the data with the GET request. Or we can reach a specific member of the list. There are two members on the list. The first member is at index 0. The second member is in the first index. The server returned an error because the second index did not exist. We can also see the error in the console. Let's do a different example. This is how I organize the return function. Note that the members in the list are deleted because the server restarts. Let's send data to the server. Notice that the message returned has changed. This way I can access all the data in the list. I can also access a specific member. The data sent via the API needs to be processed while being displayed to the user. We need appropriate data during the processing phase. For example, let's send a different text instead of title. Do you think the POST method will work properly? Since there was no check, the method worked without errors. Let's see all the data in the list. As you can see, it has a different title than the others. This is not true. Or title data does not have to be in string data type. Even if it is of integer data type, the data is processed on the server. As you can see, it gave no error. Or the content may be of Boolean data type. We have to check all this data. Otherwise, unwanted data may be sent to the server. Therefore, software developers experience problems in the background while processing this data. Let's learn how we can control it. I don't need the body library right now. I will use the Pydantic library when checking data. Pydantic is the most widely used data validation library for Python. You can access a lot of information about the Pydantic library by visiting this website. Now let's learn how we can verify data. I will create a class. I am sending the base model library to the class. Inside this class, I can specify the data title and type. I want title and content data to be sent to the server. Additionally, both data types must be string. Now let's make some changes to the post function. I will create a post variable from the post class. 
I send the variable to the append function. The server restarted and the list was reset. First, let's send appropriate data. There is no problem since the data headers and data types are compatible with the values specified in the class. I can access the data with the GET request. Now let's send some inappropriate data. I am changing the data header. Information was sent that the title data is not suitable. Now the data is available. Let's change the content header. Data not available at this time. A message stating this was sent from the server. Let's fix the data. Now let's send data in a different data type instead of string. It does not comply with the data type specified in the class. Let's make it suitable. Content must be string. Let's convert it to integer data type. Error. The headers and types of the two data must be as specified in the class. So what happens if we send different data other than title and content? It works without any problems. However, no data that was not in the classroom was processed. Only data in the classroom is recorded. Let's send another different data. The user can send many data to the server. However, data with the header and data type specified in the class must be included in the sent data. Data control can be done this way. Now let's add some other data to the class. We can assign a default value to the data. So, if the user does not send published data, it will be considered true. Let's take a look at how it works. The list is currently empty. Although the published data added to the class was not sent, the default value was added to the list. Published data can also be sent as true. It will not give any errors. If false is sent, the default value changes. A value different from the default has been saved to the list.
Let's do a different example. I'm transferring the optional class. I add the rating value to the class. It has an integer value. If the value is not sent by the user, it will be considered none. Let's see how it works. The list is currently empty. Notice that the rating is none. Let's send a value. The value sent instead of none is added to the list. Let's do different examples. The rating class is specified as an integer. However, it can also be sent as a string. It will work without errors. Published is declared in the bool class. Since no string value is considered false, it will work without errors. Considered no false. If a different string is sent instead of no, it will not be accepted. The error message was sent by the server. As in the previous examples, title and content must have string data type. Title cannot have integer data type. The title string must be included in the sent data. Content data, such as title, must also be included in the sent data. Otherwise it gives an error. Published data does not need to be included in the sent data because it already has a default value. If published is not sent, the default value true will be assigned. There is no need to send the rating value because it has a value of none by default. In this video, we learned how to perform data validation using the Pydantic library. Thanks for watching. To support us, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel and like the video.